ID and I'll be your guide for this tour and on this tour we'll be talking about some not such a pleasant and not such a very nice things we'll be talking about the communism, about the wars and pretty bad things what happened over here and just before continuing uh, am I speaking to see to take as many photos as you want hello mom, hello mom hello. Uh, so without any problems uh, I'm here for everything later if you want to take the photos of the map when we come to the bunker in the basement, I'll put it on the table so it'll be easier for you to go and let's explore our history. Over there. Hello guys. Hello guys. I'm walking Today we are going to go to Baba Jani. Will you say it? The place is not going to go to Baba Jani. But you know, you can go to Baba Jani. You can go to Baba Jani. You can go to Baba Jani. Baba Jani is not doing that. Okay, we can't do that. This chubby gentleman will be the first stop on uh, our tour, and as I promised, I won't bother with a million of historical facts, million of years, million of things we can get immediately after this tour. But to understand everything better, we have to go a little back in our past, and we're going approximately 100 years back. 100 years ago, Croatia used to be part of one bigger country, and a bigger country was first called Habsburg Empire, and later it was called Austro-Hungarian Empire. It was a big multinational country with two capitals. One capital was Vienna, in today's Austria, and the second capital was Budapest, in today's Hungary. The year 1914 has come, and here in Sarajevo, Archduke Franz Ferdinand was killed and assassinated, and the First World War starts. This country was fighting together with the German Empire, what is today modern Germany, and with the Ottoman Empire, what is today modern Turkey. Four years later, the war has ended, and this country was a loser. And if you're a loser, no one asks you anything because the winners are those who are writing the history and the winners are those who are deciding about it. But we Croatians we said to ourselves, let's go out of this country and let's make our own Slavic country. But we are no Croatian medicines and government, being the citizens of second class. But then the chubby gentleman comes on his political stage. His name is Stepan Radic, as written here. But today we have him on a bank of 200 Croatian kuna. So if you exchange the money or if you withdraw the money, it's very likely you have the bank in your hands. He was the Minister of Education in the country. So he decided to go to Belgrade, to Parliament, to talk about all the problems which are bothering us, Croatians. But in the middle of his political speech, one serving member of Parliament took out the gun and he started to shoot. He killed immediately three Croatian representatives. Two of them were injured. One among injured was him. And after about one month, he was injured. He was injured and after one month, he died. And for us, Croatians was shocking because how can you kill each other in the middle of Parliament? Almost middle of 20th century. So some things will be totally the same, some things will be absolutely different over here. So, uh, but uh, I will say that we, are, we also had it over here. That's why we have this as a second stop on our tour because back in the past here we didn't get the farm. It was a place where Zagreb Jewish Temple, the synagogue, used to exist from 86 years. Exactly this very same place. At this very same place from 86 to 7 to 1941. Today in the city we have absolutely none of the traces of the synagogue. If we, the synagogue doesn't exist. Only thing what reminds, if you look under the blue letters, there's a memorial plate. And this, this memorial plate is the only trace showing that Hello guys, so this is our stop. And this is our friend. What are you doing? Vid. 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 Sing. There's a movie shoot. We're going to do a movie. Yeah. Why not, right? Okay. Done. Are you villain? Yeah, I'm going to go. Is there a villain? I hate that movie. Sorry, Bollywood. Yeah, you're good. Tell us a brick. Tell us a brick. And 
Acoustics, we're talking about here. If I start to sing over here, because walking through the tunnel, I'm going to be walking. 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 मैं इमरान खान का बहुत बड़ा सपोर्टर हूँ। ये तो सारा क्रॉप करूँगी मैं यहाँ से। तो ना मैं तो ना। वाइट क्या लगी है? I don't know man, कोई नहीं कह रहा ये। It's white man, white. I'm so fly. क्या? ये देखें। सुबहान अल्लाह। ये देखें क्या वाल है। ये देखें ये। Oh my god, ये तो नहीं देखना चाहिए मुझे। I wanna be in trouble. Okay. अभी हम जा रहे हैं टनल में। It's gonna be cold, girl. मेरी जैकेट पहननी है? नहीं। Okay, पहन लेना। ये हम यहाँ से गुजर के गए थे कि नहीं। मेरे को वो इस साइड है जहाँ पे आगे जाके ऊपर चढ़ते हैं ना? Oh yeah। मजा आया। पीछे से सबको बंद कर देते हैं। बाहर तो हम नहीं ना बाहर कर देते हैं। Hello, we're in the tunnel. I love my wife. No, 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 no. Now, guys, we are going to the tunnel. This was a bunker. This is the original part of the tunnels from the Second World War period. If you look down there, there is one bigger pool. The bigger pool is not the original. The bigger pool was built in the period of communist Yugoslavia. And we know for what it was used. Tunnels were used here as a shelter for the case of the air raid, like the bunkers. And they were built here strategically because if you bomb the city from the plane, from the plane, this is just a regular hill. And people are living on the doors. If you're coming the landway, close the gates, close the doors, you cannot know what is hidden or here. I'm sure that some of you pass next to the street or here without knowing the tunnels are here. And uh, tunnels were used. Okay, okay. 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 Okay, now, which favorite vlog will be with Baba Jani? Let's see in the comments down below. Okay. Let's see. 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 Let's see.
So you said no life for now? No life for now. I'm always saying to my colleagues that we should install one camera over here just to film your face. <laughs> But don't worry, we all have watches, wallets, kidneys, everything what we need to the life. Uh, just a small plan how and what we'll do. First we'll do the left part of the walls, then we'll do the videos, and then we'll do the right side of the walls. Feel free to take as many photos as you want, but when you make the full circle, I'll turn all the lights on, so it'll be easier for you to take the photos with more light. Feel free to do it later. And just please, as a hint, do not clean on the walls because they're close with dirty and white. Uh, maybe the feeling is not the nicest, maybe the smell is not the nicest, but we want to keep in the original way how people had to hide here during the wars to, to be as authentic as possible. But coming back to our story, the year is 1980. Tito has died, and the country is suddenly facing big economical crisis. People had to wait in line to buy coffee, sugar, milk, bread, all the things what they used to have it as a normal. But similar like in other parts of the world, similar like today, one of the biggest problems in the country became the lack of petrol and lack of fuel. So, in Yugoslavia, we decided to introduce something what was called odd and even driving system. It was something like this, on the odd days in the month, 1st, 3rd, 15th, 21st, you were allowed to drive your car only if your car plates would end by the odd number. So, uh, uh, if you had, I don't know, car plates ending with number eight, nine, like this one, you could drive it only on the odd days. On the even days in the month, 2nd, 22nd, 30th, you could drive your car only if your car plates would end with an even number. What people were doing, for example, those are car plates of my grandpa's car. He would take the marker 
and he would put here number eight. <laughs> and he was driving every day. And uh, countries suddenly figure out what people are doing, so they decided to introduce the coupons, and with each and every of the coupons, you are allowed to buy 10 liters of fuel per person per month. What can you do with 10 liters? Wow. Absolutely nothing. But a black market blossomed. Things what are going on. The first problems were start with the side we were talking earlier about. This is the place where, the, for example, family who is living in the house, Abu Was, they would come here and they would hide over here. And during the wars, practically your whole life was in the bunkers, in the basement like this. As I said, I'm 30. I was born in 992. I was born in the basement of the hospital. I was born during an air raid in something like this in the hospital and my mom she had to leave the hospital literally the same day when I was born because the new injured people that were coming from the battlefield and they had to leave her and free the beds from them there will be voiceover, there will be subtitles but also I'll be commenting all the time but if you have any question please just tell me and I say, I'll explain it without any problem so just sign So this is the communist Yugoslavia, what we were talking earlier about, Yugoslavia that existed from 1945 to 1991, and this is the ethical map of Croatia. What you can see in yellow, those are territories where Croatians were majority. What you can see in pink, territories where Serbs were majority. So we can say Croatia was pretty simple, Croats against the Serbs. But if you look in the middle, Bosnia and Herzegovina, uh, there are also some white territories. White territories are territories which are super mixed, and we didn't have ethical majority, but there were on the 17th of August 1990, Serbian rebels in Croatia blocked the highways around the town of Kanin. This was the start of an uprising today known as the Log Revolution because of many logs and rocks that were used to block the roads. In occupied areas, Serbs founded the Serbian Autonomous Region Krajina, SAO Krajina, a state inside a state. It was Easter, 31st of March, 1991. There was a peaceful holiday mood. It was disrupted by the news about violence at Plivnitsa Lakes and the murder of Croatian police officer Josip Jovic. A few days earlier, a Serbian rebel group had broken into the board office of the National Park Plivnitsa Lakes. The workers and guests of the National Park were captured in the hotel. The rebels started stealing the goods and harassing the captives. The Croatian Ministry of Interior reacted by sending the police from nearby towns. The police officers were welcomed with barricades and gunshots. A few police officers were injured and Josip Jovic was killed. In this action, 29 Serbian rebels were arrested. On the same day, Armed vehicles and transporters of the Yugoslav People's Army, the YPA, blocked all roads to Plivnica Lakes. This reaction showed that the Yugoslav Army openly supported the rebels. Also quite heavy bombard in the city. And a lot of people like to compare it to Mariupol. 
new city in Ukraine because the Red Cross was forbidden to enter. country and this was the most bloodiest and most brutal war what happened over here and officially Yugoslavia exists until the year 2003 what is renamed to Republic of Serbia and Montenegro but in Russia thing propaganda is also very important and this propaganda you can find also on this side here uh, the first one uh, where it's really helped creation now this is the propaganda which is sent all around the world to show there is a war happening those are artworks from creation kindergartens then uh, appeals to the world to do something. For, for example, the post is written, my dad is Croatian soldier. Tigers were further you go. Tigers were one of very elite squad, like Marines. Croatia needs you. Do you love Croatia? If you love Croatia, take the uniform and fight for it. And something what I find super hypocritical, uh, look at the signs, peace, peace. <laughs> but again, fight for the peace. And then every male age 16 to 60 would get the draft for the army, like this one. You are not obliged to go to the army, but you are obliged to reply to the draft. And it's a very big shame, both for you and for your family, if you didn't want to go to the army. Uh, for example, my dad, he was a volunteer during the war, and I was often talking to my friends what we would do. Would we go or not? And I was always saying, no, I, could, I would never go to the war, I could never fight. I'm telling this in peace. Uh, I would just like to ask you please to stand up to show you a last three photos over here. Just please don't look at this if you blind. Blinded by the lights. The photo over here is one of the very famous photos from the war here, especially because of this, I mean, because of this graffiti behind the soldier. It's written Guns and Roses. Early 1990s, X and Roses was a big guy. And they asked the soldier, how does he comment these Guns and Roses? And I apologize for my bad words. Now he said, fuck Guns, fuck Roses. Now we need more guns to fight for our country. In a couple of years, we need more roses to put in their graves because it's very likely that all my friends will be dead. Thank you. No. So, okay. yes, please, I just have to take the truth down because of the community. So, I'm listening and answering the question, please. So, I have a couple of questions. Yes, a couple of answers. Macedonia, not, not low, not low, okay. because Macedonia was always one of the poorest parts of Yugoslavia. Uh, we have one poorer state, no, so usually in the This is the ski bouquet. Macedonia was not rich, and uh, Macedonia had a lot of problems with Bulgaria, with Greece, and with Albania. So, um, um, the poor Macedonia had problems with literally everyone. So, if you ask me, get it. Yeah. 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 If you don't have questions, you're free to go and do 